Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. In today's webinar, we will be covering multiphysics analysis of a cross-linked polyethylene cable. This cable type is ideal for transmission and distribution of power because of its properties which will be discussed in this webinar. We will also cover advantages, applications, electric and magnetic field analysis of this high voltage power cable. One of our flagship products, EMS for SOLIDWORKS, will be utilized to showcase FEA simulations during this webinar. Before discussing today's agenda, let me introduce us. My name is Cal and I handle sales and marketing division of our company. My colleague Arvind is a director of product management and an expert on application topics within the domain of low frequency electromagnetics. He will be delivering the technical part of today's webinar. Before moving on, I would like to highlight few points. During this course of presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat window to type in your questions. We will answer them at the end of this presentation or will reply to you via emails. A webinar recording link will be sent to all the registrants in few days. Our agenda for today is following. I will briefly talk about our company EMWorks, where we are located and what products we offer. Then my colleague will present the technical part of this webinar. At the end of the technical presentation, I will talk about various learning resources offered by EMWorks for its software users. EMWorks offers 3D and 2D electromagnetic simulation software as an add-in tool for SOLIDWORKS and Autodesk Inventor 3D CAD. Our company was founded in the year 2000. We have a vast sales network in the form of two offices and a global reseller channel. We provide our solutions and services directly or through a reseller in America, Europe and Asia Pacific region. Our company has a strong research and development team with years of experience in the field of electromagnetics. In addition, our products are gold certified by Dassault Systems SOLIDWORKS Corporation since 2008. As you can see on the screen, we have two office locations. Our headquarters is in Montreal, Canada and we have another office in Germany. Let us take a quick overview on EMWorks products. We offer four products with various add-ons covering a wide frequency range. Our first product is called EMS, which is used for electric and magnetic field modeling for low frequency applications. It covers many applications like insulators, cables, bus bars, permanent magnets, actuators, circuit breakers, transformers, and electrical machines. Our second product is called HF Works, which is used for electromagnetic simulation of RF, microwave, high frequency and high speed electrical and electronic devices. It covers applications including wide range of antennas, resonators, filters, connectors, and waveguides. Our third product is called EMWorks 2D, which offers static analysis and covers simulation of planar and axisymmetric geometries. Our latest addition is Motor Wizard software which is a template based motor design tool. It offers analytical and finite element analysis of brushless DC electrical machines. In addition to these solutions, we offer few multiphysics add-ons like thermal, motion, linear statics and circuits. In today's webinar, Arvind will use EMS 3D and EMWorks 2D products to showcase few, few magnetic and electrical field analysis of a high voltage power cable. Let us briefly touch upon the licensing structure offered by EMWorks. We offer three different programs, commercial, academic, and startup. Each program has its own benefits and requirements. Within commercial program, we offer perpetual licenses while in the rest of the two programs, our licensing structure is usually annual based. 
The topic for today's presentation is Multiphysics Investigation of a High Voltage Power Cable. My colleague Arvind will focus on various topics including advantages and applications of a cross-linked polyethylene cable, design characteristics of a high voltage power cable and FEA simulations including electrostatic and AC magnetic analysis. I would now request my colleague Arvind to take over and present the next part of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Cal, for the introduction. Now let us look at the agenda for the technical presentation. First, I will be talking a little bit about high voltage power cables. Next, we are going to look at some of the design challenges that engineers face in designing these high voltage submarine power cables. Next, we will go over some results of simulation for particular configurations of high voltage cable. Then I will also get an opportunity to show you our EMS products. Finally, we will conclude with what we have seen. Let us take a look at high voltage submarine power cable. What are they? As the name suggests, these are cables that are buried under water, basically oceans or sea. So they are also called subsea power cables. They typically carry three-phase current, but they are not restricted to carrying three-phase electricity. They need to have high flexibility and strength because they are buried deep under the water. Let us take a look at some of the advantages that they present. Now they have excellent insulation. What I mean by insulation is electrical insulation. The solid XLPE, which is really the core of the submarine power cable, presents this factor. They don't need any oil to achieve their cooling. They have a wide range of operating conditions all the way from 1 kilovolt to 500 kilovolts. And because of the structure that we will take a look at little more intimately, they have very good mechanical performance. Now, naturally, then the applications for these cables are in areas where there are some offshore activities going on. For example, oil and gas drilling, marine platforms. These cables often act as conduits to supply power to these offshore installations. And uh, after the tsunami, there have been a lot of subsea observatories installed by various governments in various uh, parts of the ocean. And so these uh, tsunami pre-warning systems also require electricity and these subsea cables often carry the electricity from a nearby island. Now before we take a look at the design challenges, let us take a look at the structure of a subsea power cable. For example, here on the right, I have a cross section of one such commonly used design for these cables. You can see that these conductors are there. They are the ones that carry electricity. Then these conductors are covered with lead sheath. These lead sheath are basically there to block the electric field from actually leaving the sheath. Then we also have twisted outer armor, which provides mechanical strength. And all of these are packaged inside XLPE which acts as an excellent electrical insulator. Now, as engineers of these cables, what are some of the performance characteristics that we are looking at? First, they would like to get an idea about the capacitance and the resistance that these cables actually offer. Then they would like to know if the voltage carrying capacity of these cables are indeed there for the ratings that they have been designed for. 
So what I mean by that is the electric field distribution inside the cable becomes important and they would also need to study breakdown of these cables should any fault occur. Finally, losses play a very important role. These lead sheets have eddy current losses and it's important to calculate them. Also, the armor, which is typically made of steel, have losses in them and it's important to calculate them. And finally, the temperature distribution inside the cable becomes important because we need to make sure that thermally the cable does not get too hot. Now, one such simulation we ran, let's look at the comparison of capacitance and resistance. Notice that the capacitance calculation coming from simulation of a cable design confirms very well with the IEC standard. Same goes for the resistance calculation. The degree of error is less than half a percent in these computations. So we can conclude with a lot of confidence that simulation can be adopted for finding out the capacitance and the resistance of these cable designs. And as a result, when you have a new design of the cable done using a computer, we can use finite element analysis to actually compute its performance, namely its capacitance and its resistance. Let us also take a look at the simulation results when it comes to electric field and breakdown voltage. Now you notice here that all these metallic sheets are actually grounded and then the conductors are kept at their respective electric potential. Now there is going to be an electric field in the dielectric or in the insulator XLPE and that electric field has to be within the breakdown voltage for all operating values of the voltage. Now EMS electrical simulation helps you to understand the electric field distribution and the breakdown voltage. Now in the design of these cables, the leg sheets are properly grounded and as a result, the electric field actually is confined inside the lead sheet. The lead sheets actually act as a Faraday cage. And the XLPE is chosen in such a way that its breakdown voltage is much higher than the electric field that is achieved inside the lead sheet. Next, I'm going to be showing you EMS product. We are going to take a cross section of this cable and using EMWorks 2D, we will do a very quick simulation to understand the electric field distribution and the safety factor distribution inside the cable. Now we are inside SolidWorks where I have a cross section of the cable model. We are going to use EMWorks 2D to study the breakdown of the cable. Now to do that, we do what is called as an electrostatic simulation inside EMWorks 2D. Notice that EMWorks 2D is a gold certified add-in product so that you can do your simulations right inside SOLIDWORKS. First, we create a study. Here I have a name of a study called Capacitance and Breakdown Analysis. Next, we define the materials for various components. EMWORKS 2D comes with a standard material library that helps you to define various materials for your simulation. For example, the XLPE here, let's go ahead and edit so that we can inspect its properties. Notice that it has a relative permittivity of 2.3 and a dielectric strength of 21 million volt per meter. 
Next, we fix up some voltages. We note that the outer armor is grounded. So we select all the outer armor material and assign a ground potential to it. And each of these conductors, they have a particular potential. For example, when the, they are carrying a three-phase voltage, two conductors might have, say for example, 95,000 kilovolts and one of the conductors could have twice that in the positive or 190,000 kilovolts. Now this is the worst case scenario where you are going to have a positive potential for one cable and two negative potentials which is half of that positive potential in magnitude for the other two cables. This worst case scenario has been studied in this simulation. What kind of results can I expect from EMS? Notice that I can plot the electric field and the value of the electric field that I have is around 15 million volt per meter. Notice that the breakdown voltage of the XLP that we chose was close to 21 million volt per meter. So when you have a maximum operating voltage of around 190 kilovolts, this particular cable design behaves perfectly fine and there is no breakdown happening. One can also study the electric potential of the various parts of the cable. Notice the very high potential of 190 kilovolt on one of the cables and minus 95 kilovolts on the other two cables, bringing out the most extreme condition in the operation of this cable. Finally, one can study the safety factor. Anything that is under one is perfectly fine. Notice that there are no regions that are red and as a result, we know that this particular design is completely safe and there is no breakdown. Now, let me go back to my presentation. You saw how we used EMWorks 2D to study the electric field distribution inside the cable and inspect if there was indeed any breakdown that occurs in the insulator. Next, we will focus our attention to a section of this cable. We'll particularly look at loss analysis. Where all do losses happen in this high power cable? Obviously, the conductors that carry the current, there is an I squared R or copper loss. There is also eddy current losses in the lead sheath because the current that is being carried is alternating current. There will be losses in the armor based on the material of the armor. If the material is copper, then there is going to be very little eddy current losses versus if the material was steel, then there is going to be core loss occurring in the steel. Finally, there is also going to be dielectric loss in the dielectric medium, which we will ignore in this particular session. All of these losses will lead to a rise in temperature in the coil and the idea is really to understand the temperature distribution in the coil. Next, let us look at the effect of armor material on the total loss. As I mentioned earlier, we have a choice of the material which is used to create the armor. We can use copper or aluminum, they are excellent conductors. Or we can use steel, which is not a very good conductor, but it has some permeability. And let us inspect what losses we get. When I use copper or aluminum, I get very little loss in terms of uh, the armor loss. Versus if I were to use steel, I have losses that is almost 17 or 18 times more than that per unit length. So. The conclusion here is that steel armor results in higher loss, but it is still preferred. 
and it's preferred because of the mechanical properties and mechanical strength that steel offers. So obviously there is going to be some sort of trade-off between mechanical strength and armor loss. Next, let us see what is the fundamental reason why we are providing this twisting of the armor. Notice the two figures here. The one on the top right hand corner is an untwisted armor and then in the bottom we have twisted armor wires. In the previous slide we established that we will use steel as the material for armor wires and the reason despite having higher loss is because it provides better mechanical strength. Now we did simulation to understand what kind of losses happen when you have untwisted steel versus twisted steel armor. Certainly twisted steel armor results in a much lower armor loss and that is really the reason why we use twisted armor wires to fabricate these cables. Finally, let's take a look at the temperature distribution. EMS actually can be coupled with a thermal conduction solver. Together, the magnetic and the thermal conduction solver can compute the temperature distribution in the cable as you see here. And for this particular cable, the temperature, the maximum temperature is limited to 42 degrees centigrade, which certainly is within the design specifications for the cable. Next, I'll be showing you a 3D simulation of the XLPE twisted cable. And some of the objectives of this simulation are as follows. We are interested in computing the armor loss. We are also interested in computing the eddy losses in the sheath. Finally, we would like to understand the magnetic field distribution and also observe the skin and proximity effects in the copper and the lead sheets. Now I have a twisted cable 3D model inside SOLIDWORKS. You can see the outer region represents the seabed and then there is this cable. Contrary to the 2D simulation that we saw, we now have a definite length of the cable. So we are going to do using EMS for SOLIDWORKS a 3D simulation on this cable. EMS for SOLIDWORKS just like EMWORKS 2D is an add-in product and the simulation can be accessed right inside SOLIDWORKS. The first step is to create a study. Here we have created what is called as a AC magnetic simulation. In the AC magnetic simulation it is mandatory to specify the frequency with which the current is carried by the copper conductors. Also, the AC magnetic simulation can be coupled with a thermal conduction solver to give you the temperature distribution. As we did in the 2D simulation, we have to specify materials for the various components. The three inner conductors, they are made of copper. Then the outer cellular polyethylene is where the twisted armors are situated. The dielectric is made of XLPE and here is the twisted armor material made of steel and the sheath is made of lead. Once the materials are defined, we can use the definition of coil to tell the program how the current is carried by these conductors. And they are done with the help of what is called as a solid coil. Here, the conductor carries a current and you can see the current enters 
on the left and then current leaves the model on the right side as denoted by the arrows. Once you define the current, then you need to go ahead and then specify the RMS value of the current and then also specify the phase angle. Now because we have three conductors carrying current at three different phases, you can now specify the phase shift between the two conductors. So it will be 0, 120 and 240 degrees for the three conductors. So similarly, I have defined coils for the second and third conductor. Now let us uh, take a look at some of the results. And prior to this webinar, I have run the simulation so we can jump straight into the results. Now, a lot of these results are packaged into the result table. For example, you can calculate the inductance, the self and the mutual inductance for all the conductors. Also, the impedance is calculated. Finally, one can take a look at all the losses. For example, these are the solid losses, I squared R, copper losses occurring in the conductor. Similarly, you can see the losses in the lead sheath, which can be added. And all the losses that occurs in the twisted armor is also produced in this table. EMS is a 3D finite elements software and hence it has some powerful visualization in 3D. For example, users can visualize the magnetic flux density. Here is a plot of the magnetic flux density in and around the cable. Notice that the steel armor provides an excellent shield to the magnetic flux density and as a result you can be assured that the flux density does not escape the cable. Next we can take a look at the current density. Here I have the three cables and the lead sheath and you notice the current passing through these cables and you can also see the both the skin effect as well as the proximity effect in this distribution of current. Last but not the least, the losses are important. EMS helps you to visualize the losses. In the result table, we saw the value of these losses. In this plot, we can see the location where these losses are likely to occur. Let me zoom in. You can see very high losses which are in perfect correlation with the current distribution. You can now see the loss through all the potential components, the conductors, the lead sheet and the twisted armor. Notice that the blue is actually low value of these losses. Now I can isolate them. For example, I can just look to observe the losses in the twisted armor and the losses in the lead sheet specifically. So we just saw how EMS can help you to simulate these cables and find a lot of interesting and valid information that is required for an engineer who designs these cables. We just saw how EMS 3D can be used to study the cable design. Let me then conclude this technical presentation with what we saw. Now we saw how EMWorks products namely EMWorks 2D and EMS 3D can be used to study the performance of the cable. Namely, we saw how we were able to calculate the capacitance and resistance of the cable. Then we studied the electric field distribution inside the cable and also studied if there was indeed any breakdown. And for the design that we investigated, we found that 
for the operating conditions there was no breakdown next we went to ems 3d and we studied a particular length of the cable as a 3d model this allowed us to calculate things like magnetic flux distribution in and around the cable we were able to visualize and also quantify the losses occurring within the cable per unit length and also we could do a thermal simulation to look at the temperature distribution all of these simulations were carried out right inside SOLIDWORKS and there was no export or import of 3D geometry. EMS is an add-in product to SOLIDWORKS and it's a gold certified add-in product which has a philosophy very similar through SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD and as a result users of EMS have a very short learning curve to do magnetic and electric simulations inside SOLIDWORKS. Now I will turn on the screen to my colleague Cal who will go over the last section of this webinar. Thank you Arvind. We used EMS 3D and EMWorks 2D products to study and analyze a high voltage power cable. Let us take a quick overview on these products. EMS 3D product offers electrical and magnetic solvers. In addition, few multiphysics options are available with this product like thermal, motion, linear statics and circuits. EMS software is available in four package options, electric, magnetic, professional and premium. EMWorks 2D currently offers only static solvers, electrostatic and magnetostatic. This product can be accessed when EMS software is purchased. To get more information on the software packaging and pricing, you can connect with me after this webinar. To simulate a high voltage power cable, professional package with thermal add-on within EMS 3D and electrostatic solver within EMWorks 2D should be used. Professional package will enable you to utilize both electric and magnetic solvers and thermal add-on enables you to calculate temperature distribution, gradient and heat flux in your model. Electrostatic solver of EMWorks 2D product can help you to do a fast paced analysis on 2D models of a cable like electric field and breakdown voltage analysis. This slide represents a small subset of capabilities available in our software products. This, to simulate a high voltage power cable, three capabilities are highlighted in this slide. 2D simplification. Using this automated feature in EMWorks 2D product, you can quickly convert a 3D CAD model into a 2D geometry and carry out fast paced analysis of your simulation problem. The second capability is magnetic and electrical solvers. Magnetic solver can help a user to analyze magnetic fields, forces, eddy currents, losses due to time harmonic currents. And electric solver allows you to analyze electrical fields, conduction currents, safety factor, breakdown voltages due to time varying or stationary electric fields. The third capability is intuitive visualization plots. EMS software offers various visualization tools like fringe plots, vector plots, line plots, iso plots and quantitative results of various simulation parameters like fields, currents, potential, safety factor, losses, etc. Now let us do a quick recap on EMWorks products and their related applications. We can divide EMWorks offerings into two categories, applications related to low frequency simulation and applications related to high frequency simulation. Within low frequency category, we offer three products, EMS 3D, EMWorks 2D and Motor Wizard. These products can be used to design and simulate applications like cables, insulators, bus bars, permanent magnets, 
solenoids, eddy current braking systems, wireless charging, transformers, and electrical mach machines. Within high frequency category, we offer one product, HF Works. This product can be used to design and simulate high frequency applications like antennas, waveguides, filters, resonators, connectors, etc. EMWorks offers various free learning resources. With the software purchase or an evaluation license, users can access the demo viewer section of the software through which they can access many predefined model examples and tutorials. In addition, we post application notes, blogs, and videos on our web page and social media channels regularly. We also offer paid customized training sessions to all the users of EMWorks software. Anyone Interested to get more information on our products, including a trial license, quotation, can go to our contact us page on EMWorks website. Select the appropriate category and submit your request. One of our representatives will reach out to you soon. I would like to thank you all on behalf of EMWorks for participating in this webinar. Feel free to contact us after this webinar to get more information on our products. Thank you.